Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Welcome back to another deeply rooted podcast. Today I'm joined by my co-host sister Iman. Assalamu alaikum sister. Wa alaikum salam. We've got a hot topic today that we're going to debate or discuss. It's going to be about the hijab ban as it stands in India. Out of all places where women wear scarves all the time, it turns out uh, the Indian government does not like hijabs. What are your thoughts on this sister uh, Iman? And what do you know about the situation? Yeah. Um Honestly, like, I, I'm smiling, not because I'm happy, but because I don't know where to start. And I'm just like, mm. uh, yeah, but it's a tough situation. Um, all in all, this is not new. Um, mm. Hijab has been used um, as a pawn in politics for centuries. It's not new. Um, we've been dealing with it. And people have constantly attacked Islam through women and by extension, hijab. Oh, one of the disturbing things I've come to realize from all of this, because I have been you know, reading a lot of literature from the Indian newspapers about this, and it seems to be the case that a particular school prevented six Muslim sisters from entering the premises, particularly the classroom, because of their hijab. And the reason for this was because they did not consider the hijab fundamental to Islam from the school's perspective then the attorney general agreed with that decision and the question i have to ask you is why would they make a decision about what is and isn't required in islam let muslims tell you what is and isn't required your feelings cannot determine you know laws for the common people this this is absurd mm -hmm. so the sisters then through their parents uh, put a court case or six different court cases against the uh, school and the government sided with the school, as does the, uh, the the judiciary, which is very confusing. What they're basically yeah. saying is that this is a religious matter. We leave it in the hand of the school because we have to adhere to secular policies. But this is anti-Muslim, it's anti-woman. Rather than allowing women to educate themselves, it's preventing them from even entering the classroom, mm -hmm. apparently for their own benefit. What what does this bring to your mind, sister Iman? Yeah, it's definitely um, it's when you talk about is hijab oppressive or not oppressive. There's a difference between that statement, you know, hijab is oppressive versus hijab is a tool of oppression, which I guess I'll address in a minute or so. But um, discriminating against this is blatant discrimination. Yes, um, and it's a blatant attack against Islam and Muslims. Um, and now, to to my knowledge, anyways, I don't think they've done the same thing to the Sikh community. I, if they have, that's nope. still wrong. But I'm saying that you haven't told Sikh men to take their turban off or else, you know, don't go to school, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a sp specific discrimination against Muslims. Um, and a lot of BJP uh, advocates will claim that they have historical reasons as to why they're doing this. And they you know, make these very big claims that, you know, Muslims colonized India. And because of this, you know, um, thing that Muslims did, therefore, now we have a right to take back India and, and take back our Hindu state. Um, but you claim that you're a secular state. So are you secular? Yes. Or are you not secular? Because if you're not secular, then it doesn't justify your actions, right? Well, well, I'm confused here because we've seen videos of young Indian men outside of schools berating women who wear the scarf. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking myself, so I'm asking myself, I'm one person just to be clear here. I'm asking myself, what would motivate young men to target in groups, single women, or like teenagers, going to school what does that mm -hmm. mean like is that bravery to scream yeah. and shout at women i simply don't understand the attitude that they have yeah. and just to be clear here article 25 i believe of their constitution uh, uh specifies that there is freedom of religion and there should not be discrimination based on religious preferences so at this point it you know, I'm really confused. Do they really think this is going to lead towards a stronger Hindu state? Would they not have to go against the very constitution they claim that they are defending? Mm -hmm. And in any case, stopping six Muslim sisters from going to school. Well, not just six. Yeah, a it lot. affects all of them. Um, but it starts with the six. What does this yeah. achieve for them, you think? Yeah, but I mean, there's there have been women, though, unfortunately, who have not been able to go to work. Um and who have actually taken their hijab off in the school because they're and like, they're they don't have a choice. They, and they're recording yeah, it yes. and they're like laughing at it. Um, but, 
it's not their claims are not consistent you're mm. at one end of the spectrum you're saying you're secular when you're trying to when, when clearly you're don't have that type of agenda because you're clearly trying to make India a Hindu state yes. when it's when it's not no. from a political perspective. Yes. From a obviously most people in India are Hindu. Yes. But um, by religion to be clear. By here. yeah, by religion. Um, but at the same time, we find so many videos that are surfacing of Hindus harassing Muslim women on the street. Well, if she is wearing her hijab on the street why are you taking your policies in the classroom to the streets? Why are you heckling women on the street wearing their hijab? Like, it's there's a bigger thing here. It's not just, oh, we're trying to secularize our institutions, right? So yes. it's, there's a, it's bigger than just saying, um, oh, Muslim women can't wear their hijab at school. Well, clearly you're giving a different message because there are Hindus who are harassing Muslim women everywhere. It's not just in a school. Yes, and to be clear here, we're not saying that all Hindus in India are doing this. There are a lot of Hindu men, I know particularly, that are against this type of behavior. But you are correct, there is a large agenda here, primarily stemming from, as you said, the BJP party. And as we know with the BJP, they're very far right. Um, historically, they've had roots with the Nazis. Uh, the founder at least. Uh, what we find here, and I, I would like to use this term, this is radicalization mm -hmm. of young Hindu people. Yeah. And particularly in India, it's taken the form of lynching and mob violence, as we've seen. Mm -hmm. And I look, you know, I'm ethnically Indian, if you didn't know, which you recently <laughs> discovered. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we'll get to that in a TikTok <laughs> video. But but the point here is that we're seeing that the state of India is being transformed from what was once a, if I can say, democratic secular state to a right-wing authoritarian state led by the BJP party. And I'm sad to see the state of affairs of the Muslims in India right now, especially in Kashmir as well. The oppressive regime there is it, it's getting worse. And so, you know, I'm not just looking at the hijab ban as something isolated. There is clearly a pattern of behavior here, which is anti-Muslim in its stance. And let's be clear here, the same type of behavior we saw in uh, against the Rohingya Muslims in Burma, right? Mm -hmm. The exact same type of and behavior. And there was a genocide, so. And now I wonder, is this going to lead to communal violence, more communal violence on a larger scale in India? That genuinely concerns me and I'm not seeing condemnation by yeah. other democratic states, particularly the EU and you know United States, Canada, etc. I'm not seeing a forceful response like let's do sanctions, for example. Instead there seems to be some kind of implicit agreement the hijab is not welcomed, Muslims are not welcomed, it's not our problem, you people have to deal with it. As a Muslim sister, uh, you know, you advocate for the hijab. It's not something which is oppressive. But how do you feel when governments mutually agree that a cloth on your head determines your value? Yeah, so like I had mentioned before, hijab is oppressive is one statement and hijab is a tool of oppression is another statement. Like hijab is a command from God to us anyways. Um, in, there's lots of religious groups that have head covering. So it's not just something that's unique to us, but... Um, hijab, to say hijab is oppressive is a misunderstanding of hijab in the first place. So let's just start with that. Um, oppression is when you take someone's rights away, right? Mm -hmm. If I, if you have a right and I take it away, I'm actually oppressing you. And, and the thing is taking rights away for no good reason. Cause I think sometimes rights might need to change based off of circumstances. Mm -hmm. Um, for example, in the workplace, you there are actually legitimate reasons to discriminate against certain people based off of the job. For example, if you're a firefighter, mm -hmm. they would discriminate against blind people mm -hmm. because I get that, it, yes. yeah, right? Um, for obvious reasons, a blind person cannot fulfill the needs of the job. Um, but hijab is not a right, it's, it's an obligation. So you've actually, this is a category error of hijab. Mm -hmm. um, you've misunderstood hijab entirely to say that it's oppressive. Um, it's not a right. It's an obligation to God. For Muslim women in For Islam. Muslim women, yes. In Islam, it is a obligation. So if, if I may ask you, how does that cloth, that piece of cloth on your head prevent you from doing any kind of job? Is there a particular job that you yeah. can't do that people normally do that the hijab you know, presents as a problem? problem? Like, can you not be a kasha? Can you not be you know, a sales lady? Can you not be a teacher? Does yeah. that stop you from teaching in the classroom? 
No, well, no, I'm absolutely not. <laughs> it's, it's, well, I wouldn't call it a cloth either, by the way. <laughs> whoa, Sorry. Whoa, whoa. Okay. <laughs> Gonna have to, you know, correct okay. you there. Um, or, you know, just comment on that. I wouldn't call it a cloth because I think that that kind of removes values its values. Are. Removes but, its value. But I'm just saying. From a material, yes. from if we, you know, put Islam and ideology aside for a second, what is it? It's a fabric. Yes. Right. And this is the other thing that I wanted to mention about hijab being oppressive or not, right? This, this claim, mm -hmm. um, in a material sense, it's clothing, mm -hmm. um, clothing do not have the ability to oppress or liberate people. No. That's just not what clothing does. Category it covers ever. your body. It covers your body. Yes. Okay. That's what it does. Yes. Um, what oppresses Muslim women specifically in hijab is not the hijab. It's actually society and their view on us, but also their discrimination, right? Like even in Canada, I've lived in Canada my whole life. We don't have one women's only gym that actually meets the proper criteria to our standard to okay. actually be inclusive to Muslim women. It doesn't exist. Not here. Like, okay. cause I've, I've seen them. I've seen them all and they're all <laughs> like that. Um, you know, uh, or at least, you know what? Let me retract. At least in my area, let's okay. say that. Because you haven't been to all the gyms in Canada. Yeah. As I've been to a lot of them. I I've <laughs> seen your TikToks. Yes, you have been. I've been to a lot of them. So let me correct myself. Okay. I've been to a lot in my area, and mm -hmm. they haven't shown to actually be properly inclusive, mm -hmm. um, or properly women's only, because women's only is something that's um, does have a standard. Right? If you have cameras or windows, or men are always yes. in there fixing a treadmill, it's not women's only anymore because you're just not uh it's not private it's not exclusive to women only basically yeah it's not exclusive um because other people can see or walk in right or but, there's cameras so you're saying that it's not just a piece of cloth but there is a spiritual aspect to it as well did you want to expand on that um to hijab well yes. yeah well because it's a command from god so there's huge um ideological implications to hijab and i think that that's why it actually gets attacked so much because it is a visible um symbol of islam in society that's really what it is um from from that angle um it shows that islam ideologically exists in your society which is why you don't like it not because if it's not because it's clothing like there's lots of people who wear different clothings mm -hmm. that you don't have issues with no. but you have it is specific clothing well why is that but it's ironic that by these people presupposing that and by enacting these policies against the hijab that they are freed Muslim women, they end up preventing Muslim women from getting jobs, getting an education, and that becomes oppression in and of itself. And they seem mm -hmm. to be okay with this because you, sister, you don't know what's good for you. Yeah. So that's getting into hijab as a tool of oppression, yes. like that other statement, um, which that statement, um, I can agree with actually, to a certain extent. Um, I think Please when people, yeah, I can, yeah, I will, inshallah. Um, hijab is a tool of oppression is not because um, Islam is a man-made religion and it's used to control women from that type of conspiracy. Like that, that's, this is a blatant conspiracy theory about Islam. It's not true. It's, we need if you make that claim, we just maybe need to learn our history, inshallah, yeah. and the compilation of the Quran and, and all that. Um, so if you're saying hijab is a tool of oppression in order to insinuate that um, Islam is a man-made religion evil. and evil and oh, it's it's a pro-men, like all of that, yes. then you would be wrong. Okay. However, if you're saying hijab has, is a tool of oppression in terms of politicians oppressing Muslim women because of their mm -hmm. hijab, then you could make this claim in that context, in that regard, because you are, for example what's happening in india or in france um you know switzerland lots of european nations is that they are discriminating actively against muslim women and are oppressing women because of their hijab so in that context you could say that in for this reason or uh this scenario hijab is a tool okay, of I oppression from that angle but, but, but not in general but we can't deny though that some muslim men do use the hijab as a tool of oppression yeah but we're saying that that's not the norm nor is it the standard and nor is it allowed it's not allowed <laughs> it's either, not to do that allowed. yeah but but yes it seems to be the case that mm -hmm. it's not muslim men using the hijab as a tool of oppression it's governments and states it's people of authority Let's put it that way. It's people mm. of authority who have misused their authority to control people 
right? So, um, and, and control people in a negative way. We're not talking about someone um, maybe mandating something that's actually beneficial that people agree with. Like you're controlling people in a negative way um, or you're discriminating against well, them. Well, to the people who would, you know, disagree with us on this topic, right? Let's say you're a non-Muslim and you do view the hijab as something problematic here. Mm -hmm. How did many people react to having to wear a mask during the pandemic? This was Very positively yeah, because yeah. they saw it was something good for them. Yeah. But after a period of time, they wanted to remove it and they found it to be a problem. I can't breathe. Uh, it's difficult. Uh, uh, I get contact dermatitis from it. I get pimples. And yeah, exactly. They have these right. complaints. Yeah. So if that piece of cloth was significant enough to impact your life and there can be government policies mandated because of it, can you imagine then that we have the same freedom when it comes to the hijab? This is a policy from God for us, we believe. Yeah. And we believe by taking this away, you remove rights from Muslim women who seek to cover themselves. And it should not be a crime for a woman to want to cover herself. In other words, you are not mandating freedom by removing the hijab. You are re you are mandating the option. Sorry, you're mandating the removal of the option for someone to have higher or modesty for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I find that odd. How would you feel if the government said you can't wear, uh, you know, pants that reach your ankles? Mm -hmm. You can only wear shorts above your knees. How mm -hmm. would you feel about that? That's such yeah. an invasion of privacy. What happened about my body, my rights? Yeah, <laughs> um, I haven't. Uh, feminists have been very hush hush about what's going on in India, um, which is not actually a surprise to me. Um, but one thing I wanted, because you did kind of mention um, in what you were just saying that uh, it's my right to wear a hijab. So, mm -hmm. like I did mention before, hijab is an obligation. However, in a secular society, which is the whole world, really, because Most of um, it, yeah. uh, I would I would say all of it because they all mandate or they cherry pick um, attributes of maybe what they believe in and they implement mm -hmm. them, but their political structure is a secular yes. political structure. So therefore they're secular. So I think maybe we, that's a little bit off topic for today, but I guess I can touch up on that in a, in a minute. But um, in a secular state, it mm -hmm. becomes the right of the woman to wear hijab or not because because you are secular not because you are of any other ideology you're a secular liberal state mm -hmm. and you make the claim that people can wear whatever they want yes. and now in this context it does become my right because it's in your constitution that i can wear what i want well, so it yes. depends right if we're talking about a muslim state and we're talking about like one that actually is governed by islamic laws in its totality, we're not talking about a state that is cherry picking laws yes. because in terms of um, secularism in the Muslim world, mm -hmm. um, they're all secular. Yes. I wouldn't, I would not, I would go to that extent and say they're all secular mm -hmm. because none of them actually govern by proper Quran and Sunnah, yes. nor do they have legitimate rulership. We did not vote for any of these people, nor do we give bayat to any of them. So how can we even legitimize their rulership to begin with, mm -hmm. let alone call them Islamic? Okay. They're not Islamic, right? To, to say that, for example, um, actually, I won't give a specific yes, example, because, example exactly. <laughs> because I think yes. it's going to just trigger people and that's beyond the point. So I will refrain from giving an example. But um, take the United States, for example, the United States, which I will can use the USA as an example, but just not anyone in the Muslim world. But um, the United States of America is a secular liberal state. Yes. Just because they have fringe biblical laws in their society doesn't mean they're Christian. No. So how can you say that these are Islamic countries in the Muslim world just because they have fringe Islamic laws that are only there to please the cultural norm? Mm -hmm. They're not actually there because, you know, wow, they want these politicians don't want to Islam. abide by Islamic law. They don't. They're just doing that to keep the people um, at bay, basically, because most people will you know, want some type of family law, but, for example. But let's just be clear here, right? We are accepting the view that Muslim women in secular liberal societies should have, and in many cases, do have the right to wear the hijab. And by taking it away, you stop being secular liberal. In fact, you become authoritarian. Yeah, exactly. And we ask the question, why is it specific to Muslims? Why not Christians? Why? Because I, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but here in, uh, yeah, here in Toronto, I can say that at least, uh, we find that uh, the Ethiopian women that belong to the Ethiopian church, they wear scarves all the time. Why don't you mandate that they can't wear these scarves? What would be the problem there? Why is it specific to Muslim, Muslim women. women only? 
You brought up the point about Sikh men who have to wear the turban. Why isn't it mandated that they have to be free as well from this piece of cloth, if I can use that term, yeah. uh, on their head? So it just seems to be the case to me that it is Specific. politically motivated mm -hmm. oppression against Muslims. Yeah. And this can come from many stereotypes. But my hope here is that eventually we can look at the public and ask them one simple question. Why don't you allow Muslim women to advocate for themselves and choose what they want? Do you not see yourselves as assuming the role of an oppressor at this point? And maybe we can conclude with one last question here. These Muslim sisters in India, we've seen the videos, we've gotten statements from several of them, we've seen the positive attitude that they've had. The Muslim world is firmly on their side. These women basically say, conclusively, I choose to wear the hijab, it's not being forced upon me. What should the Indian government do in response to these women demanding a basic freedom? Should the Indian government, led by the BJP party, not simply grant them and allow them, yes, Article 25 says, you have freedom of religion, go right ahead. Should the Indian government not fulfill what they state they're abiding by, their own constitution. Mm -hmm. What is the next step for these Muslim sisters? What do you think they should do? Um, I mean, that's a loaded question because I don't live in India. Yeah. I, I'm not on the ground to understand their situation and their circumstances. Um, but I think if you're going to claim that you are a secular liberal state, then you should be secular liberal. But they're claiming that we don't have to be anymore. We are an Indian state. And this is a Hindu state. Muslims are just foreign invaders living here yeah. among us. Yeah, we are foreign invaders, yeah. even though Muslims in India are Indian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, it, you know, and I've even seen some BJP go to the extent of actually trying to argue that Muslim, uh, Indian Muslims are actually genetically not Indian. And like, they really try to like advocate for that. I'm like, mm -hmm. No, no, they're Indian. They're literally from the subcontinent. Like, yeah. that's where they're from. But we're going to get a lot of people in the comments, particularly if they are Indian and they do support the BJP saying that perhaps we don't understand Indian politics. Perhaps we don't understand, you know, the evidences that they have. But as an ethnic Indian myself, if I can say that, wearing a scarf has always been part of our culture. If you look at all the Indian women, they all wear, wear scarves. scarves. It's like yeah. the stereotypical thing, right? Yeah. Or even men wear like a shawl. Yes. Yeah. 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 So they, it's just it's a scarf. So, <laughs> so it's already part of the culture. And if you truly are a secular liberal democracy, you should allow them to wear it. But even if you are a Hindu state, even if you come to that point, and that's the point of view that you choose, that piece of that piece of cloth should not be offensive to you. It should not be disagreeable to you. Why not allow it? What is the problem with it other than you just don't like Islam? Come out and admit that at least. Yeah. And then let's follow from that point of conversation. Mm -hmm. Once you, listen, there's no reason to hide the main point here. Yeah. You don't like Muslims. You don't like Muslim women wearing the hijab. You don't like the religion yeah. of Islam. Fine. Mm -hmm. So what? You don't have to like everything, do you? Yeah, I think the thing that would gets frustrating for me is when you just don't admit it. Like, if you don't like us, just say so. You know what I mean? Like, don't act like you're doing something noble because you're not. You're, this brings me to a point in the Quran where I think the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very clear. Allah says, do not let your hatred of a people allow you to be unjust towards them. So it's not giving you permission to hate people, but we all have feelings and emotions, right? I don't reject that a lot of BJP members hate Muslims. But why would you be unjust towards us? What does that achieve for you? Yeah. Nothing. And even like I understand um, because of my reading of history, I understand that Muslims and Hindus in India have been at strife for centuries. Mm -hmm. I think we can all recognize yes. that. I understand when Hindus have historical reasons grievances. to have grievances against Muslims. I understand. But that does not give you a, that's not a justification to persecute people in 2022 who are literally living centuries after people. We are not responsible for what people did hundreds of years ago no. or even a hundred years ago. We're not responsible. I didn't commit the crime. These Muslims who are trying to go to school did not commit a crime. They're just living there. They didn't choose to be born there. Like they didn't, they're there. So it's like you're, um, 
having all of this kind it's like this revenge and and the thing is i think that it is heavily politically motivated by modi um and oh, i actually call it not names no, well okay. it's just it's called duck a duck <laughs> um <laughs> but the thing is like um i'm not one like i'm not gonna i wouldn't generalize hindus no, i don't like there's can't. so many hindus yes. right and i know understand a lot of hindus are against bjp but yeah, or the party, party but right the reality is that the bjp party yes. who is in power unfortunately yes. Um, are oppressing people. And I think that, you know, if I could make a request to at least the Hindu population Mm -hmm. that we need your help, actually. Like, Mm -hmm. you are the majority in India. Um, If you really stand against these things, then it's your responsibility because you live there to actually stand with justice. And, you know, um, Muslims recognize that we've had um, a rough history in India. Mm -hmm. We recognize that and we won't deny it because it's true. But again, that doesn't give you a right to oppress anybody today and even you know when the prophet them conquered mecca he told the people that there is no blame on you today even though they were persecuting them for like almost two decades yeah we like forgiveness is you need to forgive you won't even you'll live a life of like hate and um dissatisfaction if you don't learn to forgive people even if they did something wrong to you like even if they did Learn to forgive. And isn't that also like a value in Hinduism? It <laughs> it's is. a value in Islam it at is. least. And I would assume in that it is religions. a value in Hinduism and even Sikhism and Jainism and uh, Buddhism, right? Which are, I think, the majority of... Hindu religions. Yeah. Philosophy. Philosophies, uh, yeah. Perhaps we can end with this point, which is Hindus and Muslims in India have to live together. That's the reality on the ground right now. Mm-hmm. Dehumanization and hate on either side does not allow you to live civilly with each other. Yes, Muslims should not go out of their way to, you know, uh, antagonize Hindus. They Mm -hmm. are quite literally, ethnically, our brothers and sisters, regardless of religion. But in terms of politics, yes, we will have differences. And in a secular liberal democracy, you are allowed to To have have those differences. That's the point of secularism. You don't prefer one faith or Mm -hmm. one ideology over the other. Honestly, as an Indian, you have to ask yourself, how do I want to live? And you can either live a life where you want to hurt your neighbor, or you can live your life building a community of love and care. And I don't think a hijab should be the impediment in the way towards Mm -hmm. love and compassion in your community. Yeah, no, exactly. I agree 100%. Um, I think one thing that I will add, and maybe we can conclude on this, I guess, is that um, attacking... Uh, a Muslim woman's hijab, whether it's in India or France or Quebec. Germany, <coughs> Quebec, yes. anywhere. Yeah. Um, as Muslims, we do need to be aware that this is not some anti-Muslim. I'm sorry. This is not an anti-women thing, mm-hmm. and it's not even a specifically anti-Muslim women thing. It is actually an anti-Islam thing, and you need, as Muslims, we need to be aware of that. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not. Uh, we cannot be divided in our pursuit of justice as Muslims. As Muslims. We are one ummah. Um, we, if one of us bleeds, we all bleed, period. Even if you're a millionaire living a cushy life, you bleed with the rest of your ummah because you're a Muslim. And that's like, you know, point blank, period, end of discussion. Um, so um, this is an Islam issue. Mm-hmm. So we need to be aware of that um, and act accordingly um, because... Uh, if we don't, you're going to be advocating for the wrong solution mm-hmm. to the wrong problem. problem. <laughs> it's You need to identify the problem. Um, it is an attack on Islam. Mm-hmm. Um, Islam has been attacked for centuries. centuries. So actually, since the first inception. day, conception yeah. of revelation, you know, subhanAllah, Islam has been attacked. Um, and maybe we can talk about that's another topic for a different yes. day. Yes. But we just need to be aware that this problem is not just a Muslim women problem where men can take the sidelines. It's, an Islam, it's an Islam problem where all Muslims need to be involved and mm-hmm. stick by one another, inshallah, and you know, listen to one another and, and be there for one another. Inshallah. inshallah. Okay. Guys, I guess I'll see you next week then, inshallah, for the next episode. Thank okay. you for joining us. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>